from Washington, this is VOA News. Four Syrian airstrikes rock Aleppo. France opens its first genocide trial. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Syrian activist groups say the government renewed air raids over the northern city of Aleppo Tuesday following Monday airstrikes that left about 30 people dead. Opposition groups say a mosque that was being used at a school was among the buildings hit by an explosive device described as a barrel bomb. They say the blast killed five people. There's been no confirmation from the Syrian government. Meanwhile, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov hosted Syrian National Coalition President Ahmad Jarba for a meeting in Moscow Tuesday. Russian officials say they expect the Syrian government to resume peace talks with the opposition next week. The Afghan Taliban denies reports it's been talking with the Afghan government. The New York Times says President Hamid Karzai's government's been engaged in secret contacts with the Taliban without the involvement of the United States. In an interview with VOA News, a Taliban spokesman said the claims are baseless and made up by the Afghan government. Preliminary peace talks in Islamabad between the Pakistani government and the Pakistani Taliban have been delayed after the government failed to show up for the meeting Tuesday. A member of the government's delegation said it was still waiting for clarification on who was on the Taliban negotiating team. France opened its first genocide trial Tuesday. A former Rwandan army officer is facing charges of complicity in genocide and crimes against humanity. Lisa Bryant reports from Paris. 54-year-old Pascal Simbikwangwa is pleading not guilty to the charges facing him. The former army captain who appeared at the trial's opening on Tuesday is accused of supplying weapons and instructions and also supervising roadblocks established by Hutu militia during Rwanda's 1994 genocide that killed up to 800,000 people in just 100 days. Simbi Kwanga rose in the ranks of power under the former Hutu regime of President Juvenal Habyarimana. Habyarimana's death in a plane crash unleashed the mass killings against ethnic Tutsis and moderate Hutus. Lisa Bryant, Paris. Thailand's opposition is moving ahead with legal challenges to last Sunday's election, which failed to resolve a months long political standoff. The opposition Democrat Party, which boycotted the polls, asked the Constitutional Court Tuesday to disband the ruling Pew Thai Party. A petition filed by the Democrats says the government tried to grab power through unconstitutional means by holding the early elections. Protesters are vowing to keep up pressure on Prime Minister Yunlok Shinawat to resign. The number of cancer cases worldwide is expected to surge by 57% during the next two decades. A new World Health Organization report predicts what it calls a human disaster, with increasing cancer rates disproportionately affecting developing countries. Faith Lapidus has details. The WHO World Cancer Report says global cancer cases will rise from an estimated 14 million this year to 22 million annually within the next 20 years. The annual cancer deaths are also expected to increase from 8.2 million to 13 million a year. According to Dr. Bernard Stewart, who co-edited the report, developing countries are to bear most of the increase. The low and middle income countries often have poor clinical services So cancers are not diagnosed till they're at a late stage. And so the survival of cancer patients is much worse in these countries. Faith Lapidus, VOA News. The biggest name in social networking, Facebook, celebrated 10 years of existence Tuesday, having grown from a private college site to a worldwide platform with more than 1.2 billion users. 
Karen North is a social media professor at University of Southern California and describes how Facebook is being used today. Now it's sort of lost its place as a, as a hangout, but it's gained incredible status as, an, as a utility. I call it a utility. So Facebook now is, an, is your address book and your photo gallery. Experts say the major challenge of the social networking site is keeping the interests of its youngest users who are moving on to newer technologies. Ten of the world's biggest drug companies, normally the most competitive of rivals, are joining with U.S. health experts in an unusual new effort to develop treatments for major diseases. It calls for the group to spend $230 million over the next five years looking for cures for Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and lupus. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.